In this Job Love 4 video, we're going to be exploring the Paragon system, and a lot of people have been asking me to make a guide about this topic. There are a lot of things that go into choosing which Paragon boards to use, which glyphs to use, and how do you make those decisions regardless of what class you are. In this video, we're going to dive into just that and the ins and outs of how to figure out what to do with your Paragon on your class. So once you reach level 50 and unlock the Paragon board for your class, which is different for every class, you're going to only be able to head upward and towards your first glyph socket. As you play the game from 50 onward, having unlocked the Paragon system, glyphs will drop for you until you have acquired all of them. They are never going to be duplicates, you will always get a new glyph every time one drops, and eventually you will obtain all glyphs, and you can slot them here in this glyph socket. Each class has their own set of glyphs, and even though some of them are named the same and share the same bonuses across each class, each class does have its own set, and some of them operate differently even though they have the same name. Now obviously the first thing that you're going to want to do once you get to that glyph socket is figure out a glyph that benefits your playstyle. I have the necromancer board here, and the glyph that I have slotted at the beginning is Essence. Now Essence is going to give me critical strike damage with core skills for each dexterity node that I select inside its red radius. So the more dexterity nodes I select in here, the more critical strike damage I'm going to gain with core skills. Additionally, if the amount of dexterity adds up to at least 25, I'll gain the secondary bonus, which I have here, that increases critical strike damage against enemies that are not healthy, which is to say below 80% health. So there are two parts to this. First is picking a glyph that actually benefits me, and as a blood necromancer, there aren't too many ones that affect blood specifically, but critical strike damage with a core skill is beneficial to any blood necromancer. And secondly, making sure that I can actually unlock that secondary bonus and that there are a good number of dexterity nodes around it, in order to get as much critical strike damage as I can. There aren't any more dexterity nodes inside the radius, but if I had slotted, let's say, two more, I would have increased my critical strike damage with core skills even more, which you should absolutely consider doing if it's possible with the glyph you chose and with the stats that are around it. So once you've slotted the glyph that best suits your playstyle and you've also unlocked its additional bonus by selecting the stat that matches it around it and you don't have any more stats you can assign that will give it any more benefit, you should continue moving on up the board. I highly recommend prioritizing damage, usually one side of the board is damage and one is defense, but you can do both if you like. So once you get to the top of the board, you're going to be able to attach and select another board, and you'll be able to look through these and see what their legendary aspects and rare nodes do. A lot of new players make the mistake of selecting their next Paragon board solely based on the legendary node available. This is a huge mistake, because the rare nodes inside a board often outshine the legendary node by far in many, many cases. What I suggest doing is previewing each and every board and looking at these rare nodes, mousing over them, seeing what they do, and the magic clusters around each one, seeing what bonuses they give you, and doing this for each cluster on each board so you get a really good picture of which boards are good for your build. I highly recommend selecting a board that has three or four good node clusters that you really like. At least three, four is better. And then sort of mapping out in your head the route you would take, which ones you want first, and then rotating your board and putting the best ones, the ones you want first closest to you, and then sort of mapping out where you would go and then follow that route. You'll essentially weed from rare node cluster to rare node cluster, picking up the magic clusters around it, maybe dipping over and picking up the legendary if it's not too far off, avoiding the nodes that you don't want, and heading over to the ones you do as quickly as possible. And as you're picking up these rare nodes and the clusters around them, one of the things that you should pay attention to is the additional bonuses that rare nodes will provide you if you meet their attribute requirements. Every single rare node in the game has an additional secondary bonus that once you meet the stat requirement for you unlock. So for instance, if it says 340 willpower and your character has 340 willpower, you'll gain that bonus. Or the second that you have 340 willpower, you'll gain that bonus. And a lot of these nodes have the same or similar stat requirements, so you should become familiar with what they are so you can target these attributes on your gear. A lot of times you'll unlock two or three of these bonuses at the same time because they have the same or similar stat requirements. And I really want to emphasize how important it is to pick a good second board as well, because once you move onto your third board in any direction, those boards are going to cost more attribute points to unlock those secondary bonuses than if they were on your second board. So that means if there are bonuses that you really like and you want to double down on them, that you want to have them on your second board. That's going to be the easiest way to get them when you first start getting into the Paragon system. Obviously, as you get higher into the game and you have more and more attributes, it's less and less relevant. But at the beginning, when you're really trying to focus on how to min-max your character, getting that second board right is super important because you're going to meet the stat requirements for those extra bonuses a lot more quickly. 
And I urge you here to experiment with different boards. Try different boards, see what works for you. You don't have to pick one and stick with it if it's not working. Try it, see if you like it. Try another one, see if you like it, because you want that second board to really be the backbone of your build. And at some point, probably on your second board, you're going to come across another glyph socket and you're going to put your next glyph here. So you should be looking as you get closer to unlocking that glyph socket, what glyph you want to put here and looking at the stats that are around that glyph socket to see if they're the same as your first glyph socket or maybe they're different, allowing you to put a different glyph in there that's going to be able to benefit and get its additional bonus that you couldn't put on your first board. And as you level these glyphs up and as they hit level 15 and their radius expands, Keep in mind that even though you're beelining from node to node right now, because that's the most efficient way to get to node clusters, you may actually change the route that you have on your board to go from node to node to take advantage of those expanded areas for your glyphs. Because remember, if you're getting six or seven critical strike damage per point in dexterity around a glyph node, and now it's all of a sudden its range has expanded and you can take more dexterity nodes in order to increase your critical strike damage, you probably want to do that rather than picking up some nodes you don't want. So you might not take a straight path anymore. You might take a little bit of a weird detour on your way over there to pick up some extra dexterity nodes. And you'll have to account for that as you level higher and higher into the game. And there's a lot of nuance that comes with picking your third and fourth boards as well. For instance, on my build here, I've dipped over into the bone graft tree, which is not particularly applicable to a blood build. However, it has one node cluster that I really like, which gives maximum essence and essence on kill. So I've taken that because my Blood Necro has trouble with essence management and one of the ways I can rectify that is by making sure I have more of it when I start combat and also I regain some of it when I kill enemies. And so you want to be on the lookout for little clusters like that, particularly if you're having essence or spirit or energy management problems for something like that that can, you know, help alleviate some of that for you before you proceed into your fourth board. However, here's where things get really tricky because this is my third board. Bone Graft is technically my third board. And I decided I don't need anything else from that tree, so I went out the top of my second board into my fourth board. But now all those nodes there are going to be more expensive stat-wise to get the additional bonuses that I want. So once I reach the rare node there, once I have enough Paragon points to reach the rare node on my fourth board, I'd actually be better off pulling all the node points out of my fourth board, detaching the gate, and detaching the gate from the bone graft tree, and then putting the points back in, making that my third board, and then making the bone graft tree my fourth board, so that I get more benefit from all the nodes there more easily, since I'm only using one node on my right tree there on the third one in Bone Graph. And this is exactly why you wouldn't want to do something like what I did in the Bone Graph tree on your second board, because if you went into your second board and just jaunted over into a third board, you just made all the nodes you want in the third board even more expensive. I accidentally did this in one of my builds earlier because I didn't realize this. So if you're playing one of those builds and you're like, wait a second, you did that, actually change this and reverse the order of those. So that's the long and short of the Paragon system. You pretty much get the gist of it by now. Make sure that you have the attributes around the glyph socket that you're using in order to get the secondary bonus. And once this expands, keep increasing the stats around that to get further bonuses from it. And also make sure that the second board you pick is your primary focused board because it's very important stat-wise early on in the Paragon levels. Now, obviously, as you get higher and higher level in the game and your attributes are way, way high, it's not going to matter as much what order you do the boards in. But if you're just talking between like levels 50 and 75, it's very important for your build. Probably as you start to hit 80 and 90, it's not going to matter too much. And again, don't choose your second and third boards based on the legendary nodes only. Make sure you look at the rare nodes and make sure that they're nodes that benefit you and make sure you get them and all the magic nodes around them. So this wraps up our Paragon Guide. I hope you found it useful and learned something. It's not that complicated of a system, but there are a lot of different things you can do with it but you really have to pay attention to what you're doing. And I don't recommend sitting there trying to math it all out while you're making your build. Just pick a tree and see if it works. And if it's working for you, continue on that route. And if it's not, try changing it up and picking different nodes. If you have further questions about the Paragon system, please let me know. We have more build guides coming soon.